Let's consider the relationship between range and precision when it comes to representing binary fractions in floating point notation. Firstly, what's meant by precision? In fixed point notation, you can represent the decimal fraction 0.125 with four bits. The decimal fraction 0.125 is 0.001 in fixed point binary. Precision relates to the number of bits used to represent a binary value. Accuracy is another matter. These two values are exactly the same. When you convert from one to the other and back again, you don't lose anything. In other words, you can express the decimal fraction 0.125 accurately in binary, and it's possible to do this with a precision of only four bits. On the other hand, the decimal fraction 0.1 can't be represented in binary. It's a recurring sequence of bits. No matter how many bits you use, you can never accurately represent one-tenth in binary. Theoretically, you would need an infinite number of bits. Now, you could simply say that one-tenth in binary is 0.00011, but clearly this would be an approximation. Precision and accuracy are closely related. In fact, the terms are often used interchangeably. Low precision usually means less accuracy, even with binary fractions that require a finite number of bits. But this isn't always the case. You can still have perfect accuracy with very low precision. For example, you only need two bits to express the decimal fraction 0.5 in binary. In floating point binary, precision is governed by the number of bits allocated to the mantissa. If all floating point binary numbers in the computer were stored with a 4 bit mantissa, that would be considered very low precision. Most computers employ the IEEE 754 standard. They effectively use a 24 bit mantissa, which is referred to as single precision or a 53-bit mantissa known as double precision. Suppose you did have a floating point register with 4 bits allocated to the mantissa on the left and 4 bits allocated to the exponent on the right, both in 2's complement. This is therefore the largest positive exponent you can have. And this is the largest positive mantissa. With a 4-bit mantissa, the binary point can float up to 7 places to the right. As it happens, this is 112 in base 10, the largest positive value that you can represent in this format. This is the largest magnitude negative exponent you can have, and this is the smallest positive mantissa. The binary point can float up to 8 places to the left. So this is the smallest positive value you can represent in this format. For positive numbers, we have a range from something very small up to 112. We can also accurately represent lots of values in between these two extremes. But not all of them. There are lots of gaps. Try this for yourself. You can't represent something as simple as 7.5 with 4 bits for the mantissa and 4 bits for the exponent. Now, suppose the designers of this floating point register had decided to do something different. What if they decided to allocate 5 bits to the mantissa, leaving only 3 for the exponent, both in 2's complement? Then this would be the largest positive number possible. 7.5 And this would be the smallest positive value possible. 0 0.00390625. The largest possible value is nowhere near as big as it was before, and the smallest is nowhere near as small. But we can now accurately represent more values within this particular range. Let's be clear though, with a total of 8 bits available in the register, there are 2 to the power of 8, that's 256 possible bit patterns. This means you could never represent any more than 256 different values in an 8-bit register, no matter what you do. 
In fact, in floating point binary, multiple bit patterns represent the same value, so it's even less than 256. I'll say more about that when I discuss normalization. How a hardware designer chooses to allocate these 8 bits between the mantissa and the exponent simply governs the way that these relatively few values are spread out. Another feature of floating point binary, which you could test for yourself by doing lots of conversions, is that these represented values are not uniformly spaced. Generally speaking, the gaps between adjacent pairs of values are smaller between smaller values and bigger between bigger values. To summarise, for a given sized register, the maximum number of values that can be represented is limited, no matter how that register is configured. Don't be deceived by the vast ranges possible. There are gaps, and the bigger the range, the bigger the gaps. More bits for the mantissa means greater precision, but more bits for the mantissa means less for the exponent, so precision comes at the expense of range. More bits for the exponent means greater range, but more bits for the exponent means less for the mantissa, so range comes at the expense of precision. For a given sized register, there's a balance to be struck by designers between range and precision. Accuracy often depends on precision. Sometimes values need to be rounded to the nearest representable value if precision is inadequate. But this isn't always the case. For example, the number 1 can be expressed with perfect accuracy using very little precision. Conversely, high precision doesn't always guarantee accuracy. The truth is that there will always be an infinite number of values that can't be represented accurately in any computer no matter how big the registers and how they're configured. Consequently, the majority of decimal fractions stored in a computer are only approximations. Now, I've said nothing about negative numbers, but when it comes to range versus precision and accuracy, all the same principles apply. It just happens on the other side of zero. When programmers do arithmetic with floating-point binary numbers, Inadequate precision can cause an accumulation of small errors in accuracy. If programmers aren't careful, they can end up with very wrong results. Let me quickly show you what I mean in Visual Basic. Here's a simple Windows Forms application. I'm going to pop a button onto the form and write some code for it. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to declare a variable called x of type single. In Visual Basic, numbers are stored in a single variable in floating point format. Let's assign a value of 0 to it and then output it. I'll run the program. No surprises, the variable contains a 0. Now I'm going to add 1 tenth, 0 0.01 to the contents of that variable. and I'm going to output it again. Run the program. There's the first message. There's the second one. No surprises there. Now I'm going to subtract 0 0.1 from x. And output it again. What are you expecting to see? Let's have a look. There's the first message, there's the second, and there's the third. And clearly, it's not the zero we were expecting. It illustrates the point I made earlier, that in floating point binary, a computer can't accurately represent 0.1. Let's try something else. I'm going to change the data type to double. That's still a floating point format, but it uses more bits. Let's see what we get this time. That looks better. But there is still an error, 
we're just not seeing it. I can prove this. I'm going to add 0.1 to x a thousand times. I'll do it in a loop. And let's output x when we drop out of this loop. There's my first message, there's my second, there's the third, and that's the message we're seeing when the loop finishes. Strictly speaking, if you add 0.1 to itself a thousand times, you should have exactly a hundred. So what we can see here is that even with a double, that tiny error is accumulating. In the next video of this series, I'll show you how to convert denary numbers into floating point binary, and I'll talk about normalization to ensure optimal use of a floating point register.